Hey guys, hope you enjoyed your long weekend. Um, maybe got a few chocolates in. Um, and if you had to go with this problem, um, hopefully you enjoyed it. It is a lot harder than it seems at first. Um, so the, the question was, so we have these two nice right angle triangles here. Um, and so the reason they're nice, firstly, is that all their side lengths are whole numbers. They're all integers. Um, and the second nice thing, or the second thing that we were interested in, was that the short sides all differ by one in each case. All right? And so then the question was, can you find another triangle, a right angle triangle with this property? Um, and so it is possible to find another one. In fact, there's infinitely many of them. Uh, but I think sort of the next one up, the next easiest one to find um, is this one. Um, so I guess there's a number of ways uh, that you could find that. Maybe you just stumbled upon it. Um, or maybe you, you had some sort of system for trying to work it out. Um, but if we want to try and do this systematically, uh, we need to know a fair bit more about, about these Pythagorean triples. Um, so, let, so all of these nice um, integer right angle triangles, if we write them as a triple, so these triples are called Pythagorean triples. Okay, and these um, are actually special, so one way we could get more Pythagorean triples um, is we could just scale these triangles. Right, so if I know three, four, five is a Pythagorean triple, um, I can just, for example, double everything. Um, I get that six, eight, ten um, is another one. Um, but doing this is sort of never going to keep my distance the same here, right? If I, as soon as I scale the triangle, I'm going to lose my difference of one between the short sides. Okay, so we sort of don't need to worry about any of these multiples over here. We just need to look at these sort of base cases. Um, and these are called primitive, maybe I'll write it up here, primitive Pythagorean triples because there's no sort of smaller integer triangle um, that leads to it or that can be scaled to it. So it turns out that there are actually infinitely many of these nice um, integer Pythagorean triples. Um, and for the primitive ones, they all have this nice form, right? So every primitive Pythagorean triple um, looks like this. Okay, where m and n are some integers, so pick m and n to be um, an integer, whatever integers you want to be, as long as this thing here is positive, uh, that will give you a Pythagorean triple, and every Pythagorean triple can be found in this way. Sorry, every primitive Pythagorean triple can be found in this way. So there are some Pythagorean triples that cannot be written this way. Uh, and I'm fairly sure that one of them is if you scale this by three. So if you're looking at the 9, 12, 15 triangle, um, you can't find uh, values of m and m that will give you 9, 12, and 15. Okay, but every primitive one can be written in this way. And so now that means if we go back to our problem, what we want is we want a primitive Pythagorean triple um, where these two sides, these short sides, differ by one. Okay, which means that we need m squared minus n squared to be either one more than this side, or potentially this could be the short side. It could be one less, right? So we could have a plus or a minus here. Okay, right, so now we're going to try and manipulate this equation um, and try and find some of the Pythagorean triples that we're looking for. Okay, and so the first thing that we're going to do um, is we're going to move this over. Okay, and maybe you sort of recognize this is sort of almost a, a nice perfect square, except there's a minus there and we'd like it to be a plus. Um, and we're going to sort of arrange for it to be a plus. So if we write plus n squared, um, then we need to subtract 2n squared to, to sort of end up back there at the minus. Um, and now this is the nice perfect square. So this is n minus n all squared. 
minus 2n squared, and we want that to be either plus or minus 1, a, uh, and so maybe you'll kind of recognize that the sort of the form we have this equation in is now this form. So we have something squared minus 2 times something squared equaling plus or minus 1. Uh, and then this is actually a very famous equation. It's called Pell's equation. And um, it's sort of uh, well, at least well known how to how to get integer solutions to it. Um, so I won't go through all the details. Um, I'll go through a little bit about how we can get the integer solutions and how that leads to infinitely many of these triangles. All right. So the integer solutions to this equation, so like the whole number solutions, uh, it turns out are, are intimately linked to the square root of two. Um, and I'm not going to go through all the details, uh, but I will show you sort of a an, a way to get them. Uh, and that is to look at what's called the continued fraction expansion of the square root of 2. So we can write the square root of 2 um, in this sort of weird way, which maybe you haven't seen before, but we just kind of keep making this fraction larger and larger. So this keeps going on indefinitely. And what we're saying here is that if you continue this to infinity, you will get the square root of 2. Um, and so how does that help us get solutions up here? Well, it turns out that if you stop at any point, um, the fraction that you get will give you solutions to this equation. Um, so for example, the first, if we stop here at this first one, we have that 1, if we write it as a fraction, is 1 over 1. Um, and you'll note that 1 squared minus 2 times 1 squared is equal to minus 1. Okay, so if we make this one and this one, we get a solution here for the minus part. So the next easiest place we can stop this um, is here. So if we stop the fraction here, we have now 1 plus 1 over 2, a, which is 1 and a half, so that's 3 over 2. And we have that um, 3 squared minus 2 times 2 squared is equal to 1, right? We have 9 minus 8, which is 1. So I won't go all the way through the next one, but if you stop it at this, sec at this second one here, um, we get this fraction, A, which turns out to be um, 7 over 5. A, and that tells us that 7 squared minus 2 times 5 squared, that's minus 1. Okay, so that's 49 minus 50, giving us minus 1 there. Um, and so the other thing that you'll notice is that uh, we're going to swap between the positive and negative solutions. But that won't matter for what we're doing over here. Okay, so how do these solutions that we've got here um, relate to the triangles that we want? Well, we know that um, this M and N is supposed to give us our primitive Pythagorean triples. Right, so what this is telling us, here we have the solution 1, 1, which was the first one we looked at. Um, so in order to make this equation look like this, we need n to equal 1, and we need n minus n to equal 1 as well. Okay, and so if n is 1, that means that n minus 1 is 1, and so n should be 2. Okay, and if you plug those into our, our, prim our Pythagorean triangle, uh, remember this side was n squared minus n squared, Okay, which in this case is going to be 4 minus 1, which is 3. Um, this side was 2 times m times n, okay, which is now going to be 2 times 2 times 1, which is 4. Um, and this side was m squared plus m squared, okay, or, which is going to be 5. Right? So you get 4 plus 1 here. Um, and that's our 3, 4, 5 triangle up here. So this solution of Pell's equation gives us this triangle. Um, you can go through the same process. You'll find that the 3 and the 2 here, this solution leads to that triangle. Um, and this third solution that we got leads to this triangle, okay, which gives us a systematic way of finding it to start with. Um, 
And because we can continue finding infinitely many solutions to this equation, um, we could continue this process as far as we want and get more and more of these right angle triangles. There's one other way that we can generate these, um, these nice triangles that, where the short sides differ by one, um, which I wanted to talk about because it's quite sort of amazing that this can happen. And it's using this amazing phenomenon, which is called the tree of Pythagorean triples. So the reason um, this is called a tree of Pythagorean triples is because actually all of the Pythagorean triples, not just these nice ones we're looking for, all of them can be generated from this first, sort of very first base case. Um, and the way you can generate them is by multiplying this triple um, by one of these three matrices, right? So if you kind of continually do this, um, when you multiply a triple by this matrix, you get another primitive Pythagorean triple. Um, and in fact, you can get all of them in this way. Um, and so I'll give you one example. Um, so if you don't know about matrices, uh, this obviously won't make much sense. But if we take this, so if we take B and multiply it by this triple, three, four, five, Okay, and sort of amazingly, we get this triple. Uh, we have 20, 21, 29. And so if we multiply this by B again, we're gonna get this one. And so if we want all these triangles where the short sides differ by one, we can just keep multiplying by this matrix B over and over again, and that will give us all of them, well, the infinitely many of them that there are. Um, so that's a pretty um, amazing thing to have happen.